promise you. I thought I'd go through the um, installation of the graphics card next. So, here we have it. Sapphire card. I have it lying around. It has some two HDMI and then a DVI output. And um, this is PCI Express Type 16. Slot is needed. <coughs> One fan, so it's actually relatively quiet. It doesn't perform that badly. Um, then it has a power input here, which is um, six pin. And to be able to get that to work, you need to. I have a modular power supply on this one, so you need to. I need to um, insert this cable. <coughs> so this end goes into the power supply, and then this one goes into the. Um, into the power. Now if you have different types of graphics cards as you see there's many configurations so you can actually have a dual 6 pin or even even like an 8 pin connection or even 2 times 8 so it uh, varies and then of course you have to if you get really big graphics cards with lots of power consumption then you really need to check that your power supply wattage is, is good enough. And as you see I haven't already plugged this in which was a bit of a mistake from my my part because you should always plug in all the modular cables you think you need before you put the power supply in. <laughs> and I forgot to plug this in so it's going to be a bit exciting to try and get it plugged in, in into this because it's quite a mess of cables. Yeah. Um, then if you look at the motherboard, let me see we have PCI Express times 16 slots, we have three of them. We have PCI Express times one. And this is of a generation of a um, motherboard that still has an original PCI slot. So those are not very cool. And the problem with this is that in this motherboard it's actually higher, this slot, than this one. So I'm a bit concerned because this is basically, this is a dual slot card. So I'm a bit concerned that there isn't enough, there isn't enough clearance. So I'm going to actually, I think there is actually. I think I will use this slot here. And since this is a new case, then you need to actually just eye how much where it's going to go, and then you need, need to pop out these uh, the two uh, placeholders here. Because this is a cheap case, so this is just metal inserts you need to remove, and the screws are provided to um, screw it in once you remove those. I'll also do that. And then a word on the locking mechanism, which is very important, is that when you do slot this card in, then it will lock in place. And um, very often people forget about this, and then when they go to remove the card for one reason or another, they really pull at it and they forget that this lock exists and cause damage. So remember that the, when you do hear the big click, then that's the locking mechanism going in place, and that you need to be. And uh, uh, one of the sad things is that every motherboard basically has a little bit of a unique style mechanically how this lock is implemented. So in some cases it's easier, easier to de-lock it and then <laughs> in other, other motherboards it's a real pain. So anyway, let's um, move on. So I thought I'd um, get the power cable connected and as you see my problem is that now since this is built up now there's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it isn't exactly that much space, so I might, I might actually end up removing this. So, so please, it's it's actually a very good idea to to um, pre-analyze what um, power cables you need and actually pre-install them before um, before you put the power supply in place. Because in some some case layouts, then it's going to be really difficult to get in. But I I will um, I'll fix the um, yeah, this end into the power supply. So anyway, yeah, I had to unscrew the power supply just to move it out so that I could actually access the back of it. But now I've got the, um, this is the power for the, um, for the graphics cards. So then I've got that lead coming out here. So the next thing is to take these two panels out. And they're kind of spot welded into this chassis so I don't have to work on trying to get those out in a nice way. So I've got these 
metal inserts out and um, when you're twisting these out you have, and if you have the motherboard in place you have to make sure you don't damage the motherboard when you're trying to get these out because they're at least in this case it was quite tough to twist them out so anyway now we've uh, cleared that we have the power cable available we take the graphics card Here, so I think we actually have to screw that. This is actually not very common on, on the cases that I've worked on. That comes down, now you can actually put the cord in. I really understand why. I mean, first they save money on something like this by not providing covers, and then they put an extra flap on with a kind of hinging mechanism, and you would think that would cost more than, than providing a set of covers. But anyway, screws for the case. this case the the pre-made threaded threads if you want to call them that <laughs> are awful it's really kind of huh, like fast punch work so. and then, uh, yeah. well, that's what you that's what you get when you get a cheap case so anyway now screwed in, it's centralized, and then this <laughs> odd flap can be also screwed in place and don't really, still don't really understand why, why one would have such a flap. Okay, so now we have the graphics card in, and then don't forget to plug in the power, which I was just about to do, because without the power, the graphics card will, might, may or may not appear, or at least it will, will not. Yeah, I don't actually know what kind of an error you get if you haven't connected in the power. I wonder what end would be. 
Let's just stick the plug in. Just I'll use that one. So here we go. So I'm gonna have to tie that in a little bit more. So that should be everything, and then double check that the the lock. see that the graphics card is seated properly and it looks like it's okay nothing else is interfering with it of course this is by far not the largest graphics card there is on the market but the same check supply check that it's actually in the lock position of the locking check around it see there's no interference power cable and it's actually screwed down so now it's time for a quick test and when you test this then uh, you need to actually have the HDMI plugged into and actually I said wrong because this actually has uh, DVI DVI HDMI and display port I actually forgot this graphics card it actually has a display port Switch back so fast. There's no way of capturing it. There we go. Now I had to use the cell phone to capture it on this monitor because I can't turn the monitor so that it can be caught up on the camera. But anyway, as you see now, the, um, uh, the HDMI from the graphics card is coming out in the display. And, and it's nothing to worry about the current room boot because I actually don't have an operating system installed yet. So, so far so good. So anyway, now I have the graphics card installed and it seems to work. So, uh, if you thought this video was useful, please consider pressing the like button. Uh, if you'd like to follow up with more videos, then consider subscribing. If you'd like to support the channel, there's links available to buy me a cup of coffee or buy some merch. And, um, I'll see you in the next one.